California has some long and well-established business relationships that seem to be evaporating overnight. We're talking well over a hundred years of business interaction and a very, very successful partnership. In the case of oil, California is, well, shying away from it. And so are now the oil companies that used to call California home. Not sure what I'm talking about. Well, let's jump right into the story. Yeah, Chevron ends a 150-year relationship with California. They are moving to a red state. Chevron, America's largest oil company, is packing its bags and heading to Houston, according to a report from the New York Times. This move marks the end of a 150-year relationship with California, a state that's been pushing hard against fossil fuels in the fight against, well, you know, what they say might be happening or could be happening or is happening, but they seem to think the people have something to do with it. Anyway, the oil giant's roots in California go all the way back into the 1870s, but times they are a change in. And Chevron already has about 7,000 employees in Houston compared to the 2,000 that it has at the current San Ramon headquarters near San Francisco. Notice how everybody's leaving San Francisco. This shift isn't happening in a vacuum. California sued Chevron and other big oil companies last year, claiming they misled the public about fossil fuel risks. Well, this is the same tactics they used against the tobacco companies. The problem is, is that, well, this is how we get things, move things, transport things, you name it. This is how cars work. This is how planes work. This is how the world works. So they're lying. So SpaceX is going to be moving from California to Texas. Obviously, you've got Chevron and many, many others. They've got entire tech companies running away, abandoning campuses. Things are not good in California, and this is Gavin Newsom's California. And unfortunately, the iron fist of the blue state falls heavily upon citizens and businesses alike. Chevron CEO Mike Wirth wasn't happy about this, to say the least. It was pretty much the last straw. Wirth told Bloomberg TV, climate change is a global issue. It calls for a coordinated global policy response, not piecemeal litigation that benefits attorneys and politicians, which is absolutely correct. Chevron isn't alone in this Texas migration. ExxonMobil recently moved its headquarters from Dallas to Houston, too. It's like watching a game of musical chairs, but with oil companies ending up in the same seat. And I have a feeling Houston and the surrounding areas are going to be rather popular. This exodus comes as Chevron faces some financial headwinds. Their second quarter profits dropped 26% to $4.4 billion, falling short of Wall Street's expectations. Meanwhile, ExxonMobil's profits rose 17% to $9.2 billion, beating analysts' forecasts. Chevron's move is set for January 1, with CEO Worth heading to Texas by year's end, and no one can blame him. Greg Abbott actually sent out a friendly tweet here. As you can see, the governor of Texas says, Welcome home, Chevron. Texas is your true home. Drill, baby, drill. Chevron in snub to California to move its headquarters to Houston. In light of all this, you can already see that the company sold its San Ramon campus last year and has been renting office space back ever since. As California doubles down on its anti-fossil fuel stance and crazy regulatory environment, we fully expect to see more major companies follow Chevron's lead. The Golden State's aggressive climate policies and increasing regulations are creating a challenging environment for almost every kind of business. Just ask Elon Musk, who just last month announced two of his companies, X and SpaceX, would be moving their headquarters from California to Texas. In fact, Elon seems to be re relocating everything to Texas, which I would say, pretty smart. California Governor Gavin Newsom has done a terrific job persuading companies large and small to leave the state for greener and more business-friendly pastures. I don't think that anybody in his position would see that as a statewide win. It's not even a political one. In fact, for a governor who's had to attempt at recalls and the majority of the state, rather than the isolated cities that seem to be keeping California under blue rule, 
are pretty much fed up with the direction of the entire state as a whole, and I don't blame them. The question is, will they do anything about it? And I think we all know the answer. Probably not. California has been forced this way a long time ago, and when they abandoned the previous way that they laid out the state and how people voted and what that actually meant, they really did change the system in a way that would guarantee they would have bad policy after bad policy for a very long time, without equal weight coming in from any of the surrounding areas that actually keep the state running. In fact, California is one of many states now that is at war with its farmers and its utility companies, along with, well, pretty much every other business that brings the tax base that keeps the state afloat. And afloat is an interesting word now, considering just how underwater and just how large a deficit the state of California is about to run into. I don't think there's any end in sight of red ink, and they've just traded oil for more red ink still. But what's the solution? New leadership? The removal of regulation? These are all good questions. I'd like to know what your answers are. Let me know what you think down in the comments section below. Is it Gavin Newsom's fault? Is it the entire legislature and Gavin Newsom's fault? Or is it just a state that used to be the seventh largest economy in the world crumbling under its own extremist ideology? Your answers are as good as mine. So as I said, let me know in the comments section below. As always, be sure to take care of yourself. Take care of others, and until next time, see ya.